to question 9, which is one on mathematical modelling. There hasn't quite been a question like this in the exam so far. Remember, this is a specimen paper and nobody actually had this as their exam. So when they are making specimen papers, sometimes they are quite creative and they try and come up with questions for the ideas in the new course. But I think this question does have one or two problems with it. However, it's still worth looking at, and it is likely or possible that they would want to use some of these ideas in exam questions. So the company is producing milk, a certain amount of milk per hour, and they're putting the milk into cans. And in part A, we ask to state a relationship between the rate of milk production, R, the volume of a can, V, and the number of cans required per month, N. The one thing that might trip you up is you might think that R is a rate, liters per month. So we might think R is liters divided by months. However, it's all for months. So N is also cans per month. So let's just forget about months just now. R is the total amount of milk. V is the milk in one can and N is the number of cans. So what's an equation to link those together? Well, we could say that R is equal to V times N. Total amount of milk is equal to the volume of, volume of milk in one can multiplied by the number of cans. So that would get you that mark. You could have said it other way around. Part two, how many cans can the company produce per month? Stating any assumptions that you make. So this might be an estimation question where you have to just make up numbers. For producing these cans, however, the, we are filling the cans up. So we, need, we, we are given the, the, the dimensions of one can, so we need to find the volume of the uh, cylinder. So I've got the cylinder, cylinder, height of 11.7 centimetres and a diameter of 6 centimetres. You don't actually get the volume of a cylinder formula in the higher applications of maths exam. Would you actually need to learn it? I don't know. Maybe. If you did National 5 Maths, you would have had to have known it. National 5 Applications of Maths, it was in your data booklet, in your formula sheet. But not at higher. So the volume of one can is 330.80 cubic centimetres. So now we need to work out how many cans they need. So to do this, we'll work out or estimate the total volume of milk that they might produce in one month. And then we'll divide that total amount of milk by, by the volume of a can. So we are told it is 1,600 litres per hour. However, is the plant running 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Maybe not. So these are the, the assumptions we can make. We'll come back to that litres later. So 20 days a month. Now, it might be 30, 25 days a month. It might be 15 days a month. It's actually up to you what number you use. How many hours a day? Now, I've said 10 hours a day just because it's a, it's a round number and it seems, seems sensible. There's no real reason to go for one 10 hours a day, 20 hours a day, 24 hours a day. I think that's maybe one problem with this question is how do you know? You just have to make it up. And then we can work out the total milk production. So we multiply the number of hours in one month, which it's in production, 20 times 10, and then multiply by the hourly production, the 1,600. So in one month, we work out it is 320,000 litres. Now, before we converted the volume of the cylinder in cubic centimetres to litres, because we need to do something with the total volume of milk, which is also in litres. Um, we need to have the same units there. And remember, 1,000 cubic centimetres in one litre, because one cubic centimetre is the same as one milliliter. So to find out the number of cans, we do 320,000 divided by 0 0.33080, etc. And we get 967,322 cans. Now this is basically based on numbers we've just guessed. So it's not 
a precise estimate. So um, 970,000 cans as an estimate only. Now on to part three, and I'll be honest here, I really don't actually like this question. Estimate the number of sheets to the nearest 1,000 the food company must buy a month. These were the one square meter sh metal sheets that they're using to manufacture the cans. So the cans are in the shape of a cylinder. So what we actually have to do is work out the surface area of a cylinder, which I suspect several or many candidates might have difficulty doing. So you can see I've drawn out the net of a cylinder. And if you take that curved surface round a cylinder and imagine you're unrolling it, you would actually get the shape of a rectangle. And one of the dimensions would be the height of the cylinder. The other dimension would be the circumference of the circular end of the cylinder. So remember, C equals pi times D. So in our case, diameter of 6, so circumference of pi times 6. So what we'll do is work out the surface area of one cylinder. We'll multiply by the number of cans, and that'll tell us the total area of metal sheet that we need to make all of these cans. And then there's something else as well. So let's uh, get, get on with this. I always like to put headings to keep my work organized. So first of all, one circle pi r squared. And again, you should know that. Now we have two of them, so we need to multiply a top and a bottom, so we need to multiply that by two. And we also need to add on the rectangle. The pi times six times 11.7. Put all of that into a calculator and you will get 277.088 etc. square centimetres. Now one complication for this question is that it is square uh, metre uh, square metre sheets and be, so be careful this is square centimetres we've got. So we're going to have to convert one or the other so we have the same units. But just for now we'll multiply by the number of cans, which we said was 970,000. In theory, you could use the unrounded answers here. It's not what the SQA marking scheme does, so we won't bother. It is just an estimate, so precision is not hugely important. So we get quite a large number here, 268,690,000 square centimetres. The reason this is such a large number is because square centimetres are quite a small area measurement. So let's convert to square metres. And you'll actually divide by 10,000. So we will get 26,869 square metres. Why is it 10,000 and not 100? You might think, well, it's 100 centimetres in a metre. So imagine you had a, a square and each side was 100 centimetres, or each side of the square was one metre. So the area of that square in square centimetres would be 100 times 100, which would be 10,000 square centimetres. So in one square metre, there are 10,000 square centimetres. So are we finished? Not quite, because we need to. We, because we uh, have this extra thing, which I think is one of the things I don't like about this question. It's something called wastage. So the idea is that when you are making these cans out of these metal sheets, you aren't going to be able to use all of the material just because of the shape of cutting it out. You'll have all these little scrappy bits, odds and sods that you can't actually use. Now what I suspect some candidates might try and do is they might actually draw out squares and draw out the net of a cylinder and try and work out how many or how to fit in these cylinders into these metre squares and that people could potentially lose or spend a lot of time trying to fit in these circles onto, onto the squares. 
SQA marking scheme here just says guess a percentage. We only use 90% of the material. 10% doesn't get used. You guess some, some date, and that's called the wastage rate. So we will uh, so we'll assume that only 80% of the material gets used, and it says that we should state any assumptions that we make. So we'll write that down. Now I've said here, assume wastage of 80%. I think I meant to say, assume that only 80% of the material is used. It's 20% is the wastage. But it's clear what we meant. Now, if we knew how much, sh how, how much sheets we had to start with, we'd find 80% of that, and that would give us the total area, the 26,869 square meters. So, so, th so that 26,869 is what you get after you multiply by 0 0.8. So how would we go from the 26,869 back to what the larger number is? The number that when you multiply that by 0 0.8, you get 26,869. Well, it's the opposite. So what's the opposite of multiplying by 0 0.8, dividing by 0 0.8? So we divide by 0 0.8, so you get 33,586, and we will round that 34,000 sheets. And this is another thing that I think is difficult in this question, is how anyone would know you were supposed to account for wastage and also the working back backwards. Just remember, if you, have, if you have a similar question, then you might need to account for wastage, and you would do this by doing a reverse percentage calculation, like we did here. So this question keeps on going, part B. If the production is more than expected, they can buy 3,000 extra sheets of steel. So that means they can make more cans. So how much, by what percentage, could milk production increase by? Now obviously if the milk production decreases, they have enough cans. But if it increases, then how much could it increase by? So if the milk production increases, then the amount of steel they use will also increase. And the number of cans will, will increase. These will vary together. In other words, the number of cans, and by extension the amount of steel, is directly proportional to the milk produced. The marking scheme says that, th that this can be an implicit assumption if it's implied by your answer, but I've stated this explicitly, the number of cans is directly proportional to the volume of milk. So all we need to do is work out what percentage of the amount of steel that we have is the 3,000. So let's go back and look at the previous answer to part A, and we used uh, 34,000 sheets. Now, if you'd, if you'd made different assumptions, then your numbers would be different. So how do we find 3,000 as a percentage of 34,000? Well, that would be 3,000 divided by 34,000 times 100%. And this would work out as 8.82%, or if you rounded, 9%. And that's just finally done.